Hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at the newly released Wainwright D-Class 440 locomotive produced exclusively for Rails of Sheffield by Dapple The South Eastern Chatham Railway Wainwright D-Class was first announced by Rasa Sheffield in 2019 and as soon as they were announced I had to get one pre-ordered. I couldn't really say no to one really because it's a southern region locomotive and as you all know I like my southern region locos and the one I've gone for is 4S02701 number 488 in the pre-grouping silk finish which is in the South Eastern Chatham Railway livery which I think that this would go great with the P-Class, the H-Class and the C-Class that I already own in this livery and so if I was going to get a D-Class it had to be the South Eastern Chatham Railway livery so I'm going to get this model out of the box and we get it going to get a look at it down on the layout because it's just arrived in the post and I'm dying to see this model in the flesh. So here we have the model out of the box and down on the layout. So the first thing to report, there's no quality control issues at all with this model. So that's great to see. Because when we get these models, there shouldn't be anything wrong with them. We shouldn't be having to send them back because there's nothing more upsetting than having to do that. The model also works beautifully straight out of the box and it's a very, very smooth mechanism that's fitted to this model. And also, this model does have a flickering firebox, though alas, I have had to turn the lights off completely in order for you to be able to see it, because you can't really see it in daylight very well. You can see it a little bit, but not as clear as it is when the lights are turned off. So now we're going to move straight on to the detail. So as standard, we have metal sprung buffers. On the shanks we've also got the superbly crisply applied lining. We've also got a dummy coupling hook on the buffer beam and I like that it's painted a sort of chrome silver colour. We've also got a pre-fitted vacuum pipe or brake pipe, however you choose to call them. We've also got separately fitted lamp irons on the running board. We've also got some very nicely printed lining and the Loco's running number 488 crisply applied on the buffer beam. On the smoke box door, we have separately fitted smoke box door darts, and they've been painted in a very nice chrome colour. The smoke box door hinges have also been painted in that chrome colour as well, as per the prototype. And with the smoke box door, it can actually be removed. And the smoke box door just clips into place, and in the accessory pack, you get a little tool to, if you like, pry it off. And that then gets you to the little PCB board in order for you to be able to fit a DCC decoder without having to take the body off. It's very much similar to the DJ Models products, their steam locos. Their smoke box door was attached with magnets for very much the same sort of reason. And I do quite like that little feature. I think it's rather nice. On top of the smoke box door, we have a separately fitted lamp iron. We also have a separately fitted handrail on the boiler and that has been painted in a chrome colour. We also have the chimney which has been separately fitted and the cap has been painted in what's supposed to be a copper colour. Now it would have been nice had they given that a proper copper finish 
like what they've done here with the dome and the safety valves and the whistle. They've been given a, a brass look to them, which I think that looks stunning. But that's just a minor little criticism, to be honest. And that certainly doesn't detract from the model. And also, sticking with the dome and the safety valves for a little while, as I've already said, they've been given that finish where you'd think that they were made out of turned brass. They're not made out of turned brass, but the way they've been painted, they've been given that superb finish that looks like they've been made out of brass. And that's also something with the Hornby H-Class that they did as well. A very similar thing, which, for those who own one, in this livery, you all know that it, the dome has also been given this finish. And it's nice to see that, rather than just having them painted in a brass colour. So top marks for that. On the boiler, we've got some very nice separately applied detail parts, including some steam piping, just here. And then these other bits of detail. And they've been painted, and they really do look stunning. You also get some inside motion as well, just under the boiler as well as some visible daylight, which is always nice to see. The inside motion itself doesn't work, but then, to be honest, it, I don't think it really needs to. As long as it's there, you know, that is some nice detail to look at, when you can catch a glimpse of it when it's running. Or even if it's just sat on shed like it is now. And it's been painted as well. On the cab sides, we have some very nicely separately fitted handrails. They've been painted in a chrome colour as well. And we've got the footsteps which have some lining on them. On the roof of the loco, it's not particularly exciting to look at, but we do have a separately fitted whistle though, that is worth a mention. I mean, just look at the finish that that's been given, as per the dome and the safety valves. Again, I think that looks stunning. And that now brings us on to the cab interior detail, which is just absolutely phenomenal. All the detail that you see in there, the gauges, the dials, the regulator lever, etc. It's all been painted and that just looks stunning. Even the dials, the top there, have printed detail on them. And that just looks absolutely fantastic. We've also painted the inside of the cab as well in a very lovely colour. I don't know if it's the correct colour for the inside of the cab interior to be painted but I like it, I think it looks nice and just look at the separately fitted detail that you get in the cab as well such as these little hand wheels and the hand brakes and they've been painted and the stunning paint finish that's been applied to the faceplate of the tender that just looks stunning on the tender frames we have axle boxes and springs and again just look at the superb crisp lining on the frames and also the tender wheels are metal the coal load in the tender is also removable as you can see so you can if you want to fit a real coal load in there to be honest I might just leave the plastic coal load in there and either just leave it as it is or scatter some real coal on top of it but either way that's always a nice feature to see on the models we also have handrails on the tender body sides. We've also got the cab doors on the tender with separately fitted handrails on those. And again, they've been painted. Also take note of the detail on the rear of the tender. You have a separately fitted handrail, painted chrome as well. Separately fitted lamp irons, a pre-fitted brake pipe, and just look at that little number plaque there on the rear of the tender with the loco's running number on. Now, the way that's been done, that is not printed detail. I mean, it could be part of the moulding of the tender, possibly. But the way it's been done, it looks like it's been separately fitted. And that is a nice feature to see. I quite like that. As standard with these models, well, every model that you see on the market for that matter, you have slim tension lock couplings. And again, like on the loco, the tender buffers are made out of metal and they're sprung. Now of course we have to talk about the livery. 
and the application of the livery is absolutely stunning there's no imperfections on the livery anywhere at all it's been very nicely and neatly applied and evenly applied as well for that matter the colours are correct and also just take note of all the crisp lining that you see on the loco from the boiler bands right down to the running plate of the loco the lining is just absolutely beautiful you've also got the loco's running number crisply and neatly applied on the rear wheel arch as well as the South Eastern Chatham Railway logo applied on the front wheel arch and you've got the South Eastern Chatham Railway lettering applied on the tender and the correct style of font has been used for that and just to show you the logo on the other side just look at the detail we have there are some detail differences particularly take note of the Stirling steam reverser just here and the detail on that particularly the pipe work detail that you see on that that's not molded that's separately fitted this bit of pipe work as well at the top is separately fitted and that is just an absolutely stunning bit of detail now at this point in the video I would talk about my conclusion I'll t say what I think of the model and whether I recommend it or not but before I go into that, there's a couple of things that I do want to talk about with this model. First of all, to get it out of the way, there's the drawbar connector for the loco and the tender. It is fairly easy to do, you just simply clip the tender and the loco together. Although at first it did have me scratching my head a little, until I took a closer look at it and saw how it worked. And I was able to clip them two together without having to read the manual, which tells you how to do it. Another thing with this model, if you look at the front drive wheels you can see they have traction tyres on them and they are there so that you can have maximum tractive effort with the model you do get spare traction tyres though alas only two of them you also get a spare set of drive wheels if you don't want the maximum tractive effort as well as of course the accessory bag with various detail parts to fit to the model if you want so it's a case of do you want the maximum tractive effort or not. So that brings me on to my conclusion for the Wainwright South Eastern and Chatham Railway D-Class produced by Dapor for Rails of Sheffield. And my conclusion is that this is a really lovely model with stunning detail. It is a thing of pure beauty to look at. Even if it's just sat on the shed right now as it is, it really is a gorgeous model. I mean, taking away that minor criticism of the chimney cap not been having a copper look to it, because it would have been nice if it had that, rather than just it being painted, that little thing aside, because it is only a little minor nickel, this is a superb model, and I would highly recommend it, if you're willing to spend the money on this model, that is. You know, each to their own. So, it's definitely a model that I would recommend, so I give it the thumbs up. It's a great model and it's going to make a fantastic addition to the fleet. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the D-Class running around the layout, pulling a rake of six southern region coaches so it can strut its stuff and that way it can show you just how powerful this model is with the traction tyres. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. As ever, if you like what you see, please do subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to smash the like button. Also, while you're at it, please do feel free to check out all my other videos that I've got on the channel. And I'll see you again next time. But until then, take care. Ta-ra.